she? I'm gonna tell y'all right now, it's the first time I'm on live. It's the first time I'm on live. I don't wanna hear nothing. Okay, cool. This is something else good. This is also my first time on live, so I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, okay. Let's let's just do it. Let's just go for it then. Wow. Wow, people are joining. Hey, y'all. <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's, What's up? Popping? What's, up? What's going on? How's everybody doing? Good. Good, good, good. How you been, Peace? How's I'm your day? Good. I'm good. I went to get my car... My check, engine, my check engine light came on, and I was like, let me just go do that now, because car problems are not, we don't want, we don't like those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's been, a, it's been a chill day. It's been a good day. Pretty good day. What about you? It's been chill. I'm behind on a lot of uh, everything, so um, that's that. It's one of those okay. days where, like, what's up, B? Uh, it's one of those days where, I mean, you know, you, you have a lot of work to do, but you don't really want to do it. Right, so. Yeah. Kind of been, I don't know, just doing a lot. I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie. I now. don't know. Same. Oh, I'm, glad, <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I'm like, my hands are like this. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't let's, know what I'm going to uh, say. Oh, Jesus. Let's let's go straight into it. Just yeah. Because. Let's act like we're very prompt people. You know what I'm saying? Because no, we are. Because we're, we're, we're right. prompt. Exactly. Right. Exactly. All right. Right, right, right. Cool. Sure. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray first. Yeah. Okay. I'll open this up. All right. Father God, thank you so much um, just for this time that you've given me in peace to just have this platform, God. And I pray you please be with us in everything that we talk about. I pray that you touch peace, Father God, and just use her, Father God, and use me as well, Lord. Nothing more, nothing less than what you want us to say, Father God. Let it come out of our mouths, Lord. Um, and ultimately, let your name be glorified, Father. We present our lives, our mouths, our bodies to you as living sacrifices, Father God. And um, we just pray that your name be glorified and that this testimony that peace is going to share truly touches someone in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. Oof. All let's, right. Let's start <laughs> it off. <water. laughs> let's start it off. Well, first, let's go into introductions. I'm pretty sure everybody knows who I am. Yeah. So let's, you know, let's talk about you. Tell us, you know, your name, where you're from. Yeah. Um, And then also talk to us about, maybe start by talking to us about, like, why you love Jesus? Let's let's do that one. That's a long answer. I don't know if we have time for that. Um, but I'm Peace, PC Kid Duba. I'm Nigerian. I was born in Nigeria, um, but I was raised in Dallas, Texas for like 10, 12 years. Um, and I've lived in LA for seven, eight years. So I'm like, I'm an Angelino, like Inglewood, that's my hood. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think, you're, what was your next question? Why I love Jesus? Yeah. Just kind of like you know that's that's a whole paragraph and stuff. But like, oh, that's yeah. that's that's a dissertation that I. Yeah. Um, I mean, why do I love Jesus? Because he's he's my he's God is God is my father. He's he's been my father. I feel like I've had a lot of different life experiences, and they've all led me back to God. And He's always been the answer, and He's always been um, the one promise that has been fulfilled for me. Um, mm -hmm. So in short, like, I mean, he's everything. He's everything to me. Without him, I'm I'm nothing. I'm not the piece that people think that I am. I'm not the one pulling the strings um, in the background. It's all God. Um, and where I am is only because of God. So I think he's everything. In short, he's everything. Yeah. Amen. So, you know, that's a really big deal. And I'll tell everybody the reason why um, I really wanted to do this was, one, because... Um, you know, one thing that I really want Associated to turn into is, is an active community, mm. uh, not just like a whole bunch of like followers on social media. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like we're, we're, you know, we're not a formal physical locating church, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But we are a community of believers, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Um, iron sharpens iron. And um, most importantly, I think that we kind of live in a day and age, social media age where everyone wants to present 
the perfect self. And I talked to you about this, like everything is good. Everything's in order. We have our life together. But the fact of the matter is, you know, God is trying to get glory from our lives. Yeah, from our and the problem. Exactly. Oh, yes. And the problem Absolutely. is we never want to share mm -hmm. any of where we've been, like the messes that we're yes. in yes. because it looks bad when in reality, it looks it makes god look amazing exactly <laughs> it, it makes god look even greater when he's like i i turned this mess of a person who didn't know god who didn't have his life together into this person like that brings god so much more glory when we show the imperfections when we show the moments where we messed up yeah. but god is so gracious that he still picks us up and he still you know puts us on the path that we're supposed to be so absolutely i i agree with you 100 percent. yeah i honestly think it's uh it's really, you know, this, the entire dynamic, I think, is a testament to, you know, us kind of, and in like uh, my class, we're actually talking about this, where, you know, mankind started off as, you know, we're created in God's image, and our purpose is to exalt, you know, to mirror his image and yeah. kind of be his representation and all that. But rather than trying to be like him and be his image, we've tried to become him and, and, and be above him in some ways. Um, and I think that that's, you know, evident in the ways that we are more concerned with our own reputations and our own image rather than, you know, sharing our vulnerable side our, and being transparent for the mm -hmm. sake of his glory. So, um, you know, kind of laying down the framework with that, but I yeah. really just, you know, let's, let's hear it. Like, I, 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 oh. I, I know your testimony because <laughs> right. you know, we follow you and I follow you personally as well. Mm -hmm. And um, but just share your testimony with everybody else. However you want to start it. Um, even if you want to like start with you know, how you came to Christ, you could. Right, right. Um, but you know, however you want to start it, we can go and then I'll have questions for you like as you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I guess I'll start with how I came to Christ. Um, so I actually was I was raised in a Catholic family at first. Um, my dad was Catholic, but my mom was like she she was passive Catholic because she was married to my dad. They're divorced now um and she started want she started wanting to go to a christian church um herself because she wanted to know god a little bit more and that and being catholic wasn't something that she was raised on back at home um and one day i was like i think i'm gonna go to church with her so i ended up going to a christian african church with my mom because for me personally no shade to catholicism um but it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. I didn't feel like it was a relationship. I didn't feel like I was learning anything. I, it felt like rules, 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 regulations, regulations. You can't do this, you can't do this. And I was like, where's, who is this, who is this God that I'm supposed to serve and supposed to give my life to? Yeah. Uh, but I have no connection with him. I have no relationship with him. I have to go through a priest, the community. It just didn't, it didn't make sense to me. Um, so I started going to church with my mom and I was like, oh, cool. Like, okay, this is God. I think I can rock with it. I, I think, I think I can, I can do this kind of life. Um, but I don't think it really hit me until I was in a place where I, I really needed God. Cause I think in our, in the beginning of like one's Christian journey, it's like, okay, we, we kind of like passively do it because yeah. we don't really need anything yet. So we're like, yeah, like I believe in God. Like, yeah, I trust God, but nothing has happened. Nothing big has happened. So we don't really trust God yet. Um, and we, my mom had gotten, um, this revelation from God and we were living in Texas at the time and God had told her to move us to California because the blessing was there. And my mom was ready. My mom was ready to go. She had already started packing bags, making plans. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you mean? Like, we don't know anyone in California. What am I supposed to do? And this was like, this was after my sophomore year of high school. So wow. I was still in high school. I yeah. hadn't hit college. I didn't know where I was going to go. And she was saying, oh, yeah, we're moving to California. It's the summertime. I'm supposed to be, you know, chopping life. I'm supposed to be enjoying my time. I'm like, what do you mean we're going to move in the middle of high school? Like, I, there's a million things that I need to do. And I was just, I was stressed. I was so stressed. And I was, I was so sad. And I was so depressed because there was a lot of other things going on in my personal life as well. Like my parents were divorcing. My mom had lost her job. I was getting bullied in school. It was just, it was a lot of things happening at the same time. And I was like, God, okay, this is your time to shine. Where are you? I need help. Um, and I ended up, we ended up going to church, I think the week before we were supposed to leave to 
California. And I remember going, and I was like, God, I need peace. Like, at this point, I mean, there's nothing I can do to stop um, your plan for us going to California. But I just, I want peace about this. And I don't want to feel, I don't want to wake up and feel stressed about where we're going or where we're headed. And we went to church. Praise and worship was going on. And I just remember praying. And I, and I said, God, please just give me peace. Um, and literally, in an instant, I just felt like peace just wash over me. Like, I've, and I've never experienced peace like that before in my life. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay. So I went home. I didn't, I, when I tell you I was crying every day before, before I prayed that prayer at church, I went home. I didn't cry. I went home. I just packed, packed. And I was like, okay, God, this is where you want us to go. I'll go. It's fine. It's going to be okay. Um, so I guess that's when, that's when, I guess that was like a turning point in my faith from just believing in God for the sake of believing God to actually trusting in what he was doing in my life. Um, because he, he gave me something. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, so when you said you felt this overwhelming peace, mm -hmm. did anything change? Like did oh. anything in your circumstances, change? nothing changed. Nothing changed. What I just, I just, I just felt at peace with it. And I, and I felt like God was telling me that I'm the one that is sending you. So you don't need to worry. If, if somebody else was sending you, then you should be concerned. But if, because I'm the one that sent you, I'm the one that's going to provide in that space. Where God sends you, there is provision. Um, and that, that, that was something that was going through my head as I was packing. I was like, well, he's sending us, he's going to provide. He's sending us, he's going to provide. Um, so I think, yeah, that was, for me, that was like, okay, God is real. God is here. He's listening. He's not just saying, okay, like you're my daughter, and then just dumping me on the road, yeah. like figure life out. For myself um yeah i think in short i could go like further in but in short that's that's how i came to christ and that's how i started growing my own dependency in christ amen uh, yeah now that's a big one that's yeah, a big it, one. Is. Like, it is um i think the part about peace is so powerful because that's literally what you experience what the scripture says you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so many of us, I mean, the thing, it's funny because I think, yeah, we chase happiness, but I think even more than happiness, what we don't realize is that we chase, we're chasing peace, yeah. you know? And there's so many things that we think comes from the situations and the mm -hmm. circumstances or the mm -hmm. materials that we have. And in reality, the entire time, God has just been asking us to know him and have a relationship with him. And these things are supposed to come from that. You know, um, like it's that it's that peace that surpasses all understanding that it talks about in Philippians four. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's that's exactly an example. Like it's yeah. the peace where it's like there's not a logical reason as, as in like physically yeah. that you should be at peace. But for some reason, God is the one that has caused that because yeah. he's the source of it. Like that's yes. that's very impactful. Yeah, Ooh, that is good. Mm. So then, um, talk to me about mm -hmm. what's transpired in the past year, and you finally getting like the, like the post you made your your testimony. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. finally get one in your life. So I'm like, where do I where do I start for that? Start um, with if you can't, could you start with, you know, why you went to school for medicine? Let's start there. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, so we're in Nigeria, so we know your options is doctor, yeah. engineer, lawyer. So I was like, okay, doctor. Doctor sounds easier. Um, and I love kids, so I knew I wanted to be a pediatrician when I was younger. And it wasn't until I got to, like, chemistry, when I, whenever I was, like, a freshman or sophomore in high school. And I was like, God, this is, is kind of hard. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if you've given me the grace to do this. So I, I prayed, I prayed one night and I was like, okay, God, I don't, I don't think I want to do this anymore. I don't think I want to be a doctor. Um, and I asked him, I was like, okay, God, what do you, what do you want me to do? And I had a dream. I, it was either that night I prayed or the nights before. And one thing that I'll say um, about dreams, pay attention to them because God reveals so much in dreams that we, we just like overlook or, or don't think about or don't pay attention to um but I had a dream and I was in a theater 
I was in a movie theater. God is really funny. Um, I was in the movie theater and I was, um, this movie was like coming on and I was like, oh, cool, whatever. Um, and the screen was actually split. So on the left side, it was like me as a doctor, you know, doing doctor things. Um, but I wasn't happy and I, it didn't look like I was fulfilled at all. And on the right side, I was like pursuing acting and like doing a bunch of other things in Hollywood. And the joy in my face, I was like, okay god i woke up and i was like okay that was like crystal clear um but i i was still very hesitant because i didn't know how to do what he was asking me to do i was like okay see i i see the vision god i see what you want me to do um but i don't think i'm i don't think i'm the person to do this i don't think i'm the right person to do this because i don't i don't have the qualifications i don't I don't know how to act. I've never been in an acting class. I'm scared to perform in front of my family. Um, You're so scared not, to get on live. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> shake it over here. I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know how to do this. So I don't know. I don't know how you want me to be the person that you showed yeah. me to be. Um, and, but I knew, I knew what he had told me. And I knew if I pursued anything else, I wouldn't be happy because he already showed me that I wouldn't be happy and I wouldn't be fulfilled. So I was like, okay, well, I mean, I have a choice, but I don't really have a choice. Um, right. So I was like, okay, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pursue this. And that was during the time, that was right before we had moved to LA. So I was like, okay, well now I'm in LA. Like, I feel like you made that a little easier. I don't have to move by myself, I'm with my family. And I had gotten to, college because I went to Pepperdine and you know I was studying theater and all of that um and it wasn't looking like the promise because I I was the only black student in my class in my theater class and you know you know how that goes I wasn't casted ever in the whole four years that I was there I wasn't in a single play so I was like mm. oh god you told me <laughs> to do this and I'm trying to do this I'm going to college and I'm I'm trying to get this degree and I'm not getting casted and I'm being overlooked I'm like what what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to be this person? And this place that you've put me in, they're not accepting me. They don't, they don't want to give me roles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, whatever. I think I'll just like get a master's degree. Um, so I ended up applying to Brown um, University to get my um, master's in film and performance and all of that. Yeah. And before I even started applying, I was like, okay, God. I need you to be in this 100% or I'm not going to go through with it. Like, I, I, I need your full, you know, stamp of approval. And he told me it was a go. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I did the application process. I prepared all of my monologues and everything. And I even, like, sought advice from one of my uh, mentors who had gone to Brown and did the same program. Um, and I felt super confident. I was like, okay, like, I think, I think I'm going to be a shoe in I'm definitely going to get in. I got there and actually stayed with one of my friends um, and his family. And then that worked out amazing because I was like, I was stressed. I was like, where, where am I going to stay if I do go and do the audition? Um, but God yeah. ended up working all of that out. But the day, of, the, the day of the audition, when I tell you it went perfect, like it, like it could not have gone better. Like it was, it was that, not to toot my own horn, but like, yeah. I did what I had to do, you know what I'm saying? And uh -huh. I was like, okay, like, like I, I think I'm gonna get in, and they had told us they're like, okay, we're gonna let you know in like two weeks. If you get a phone call, that means you're in. If you get an email, that means you're not in. And the friend that I had applied with, he had gotten an email that Monday that the week started. I didn't get anything, and I was like, oh, okay, like I'm. Yeah, I'm maybe. Money, whatever. maybe you know what I'm saying? Later. I was like, I still have a chance. Tuesday right. came along. I didn't get anything. No email, no phone call. I was like, okay. Wednesday came, nothing. Thursday came, nothing. So I said, oh, I'm. I, that's it. I'm in. I'm, they're going to accept me. It's going to be cool. I'm going to Rhode Island. Um, that Friday came. And I remember I, I was taking a nap before one of my classes at Pepperdine. Mm. And I woke up and I checked my email. And it said, we're sorry to inform you that you did not gain admission to Brown University. And I remember sitting there like, huh? Like I wouldn't have heard about it, but I was like, wait, God, what happened? And and what, what he had told me was that it wasn't a no from them. It was a no from him. Wow. Because they the time that they waited, it felt like a hasty no, like, ah, uh, no. You know what I mean? Like, 
Like yeah. it was an executive decision from him and not from them. Not that they didn't want me, but that God said, no, I have better. Mm. And I was like, I, 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 I wasn't even stressed about it. I was like, okay, well, if it's a no from you, that means you do have better. And I want what you want because what you want is better than what I desire for myself. Talk about it. So I, I was like, okay, cool. You know, I didn't get in. And it was, uh, I, hate, I hated being a senior because, and being a senior and being an acting major because people are like, oh, like, what are you going to do next? Yeah. I don't know. I literally could not tell you. I, acting is not something that's like, oh, you go to school, you do this, you do this, you get an internship, and now yeah. you're like, you're Will Smith, you're Viola Davis. It doesn't work like that. So people kept asking me, and I'm like, oh, you know, whatever happens, happens. Like, I'm trusting God and however, you know, this is going to work. And I I was talking to one of my friends towards the end of the school year, right before, no, right after the pandemic started. And he was like, oh, like, you know, you should watch this show called Snowfall. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. It was on FX, Hulu, whatever. I was like binging it. And this one actor, Damson Idris, was on it. And I was just, I was enamored. I was like, who is this man? that is acting his behind off. And I, I was like, I don't think I've seen this man before. So I, I started Googling and I was like, mm, do you have to this? I was watching some interviews and he had mentioned identity school of acting. And like, I don't know, something in my spirit perked up and I was like, let me just do some more research. So I did some more research and I saw that a couple of like big name um, UK actors, black actors had gone through that school. Um, and I was like, okay, God, like, I know I just technically finished school, but like, you know, should I, should I do this? Is this something that I should pursue? Like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And it was just like, he was like, do it. And I was like, okay, cool. So I, I did the application process and um, I prepared the audition and everything. And it was funny because that night that I was preparing the audition, I could not, I could not get it. I don't know what it was. I was just not in the right mindset. And I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to try again tomorrow before I have to submit. So I like went to bed and I, and I went back and I did it the next day and I just did it twice. And I was like, okay, it is what it is. I sent it and they're like, okay, we're going to get back to you within a week. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. A week came and left and it was a week and one day. And they're like, oh, like, congratulations. You got it. You gained acceptance into the school. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. So, so we do have better planned. Um, yeah. And not only that, like they have different tiers. So there's like there's like beginner, there's like intermediate, there's like like a semi professional, and there's like professional. They put me in professional, so I said, "Heard you." <laughs> I said, "Okay." You said I'm talented. You said I'm violent. Right. Understood. Um, and what God had been telling me, because they have an agency attached to the school, and yeah. as soon as I read that, I was like. I was like, all right, God, is this is this what you're cooking? Is this what we're doing? Because, yeah. I mean, we'd be skipping a whole lot of steps, but if that's cool with you, that's cool with me. And he was like, he was like, focus on the school. And what 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 you're desiring is what I'm desiring, and I will fulfill it. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Like, But I, wow. I think I was so stressed on the time because I was like, okay, God, like, you know, we finished this one term, like, is it gonna happen now? It didn't happen within the first term. And I was like, okay, like I'm gonna keep going to the school. I'm gonna see what happens. And December came along cause I had started that May. So December came along and they have like this in-house presentation where you perform in front of some of the talent agents and like the CEO of the school. And I was like, okay, bet. This is my time to shine. This is my time to perform like I've never performed before. And yeah. you know, I did, We. We did a couple of scenes and I was like, okay, I gave the performance of a lifetime. Like I deserved, I deserved an Emmy, an Oscar, something. And I hadn't heard anything. I had I hadn't heard anything from the school, from the agents. And I was like, God, like what is taking so long? You told me that I would have this. Like, why am I still waiting for this yeah. promise that you gave me? And I like the next year came along, so 2021, and I had heard that some of my friends had gotten signed from like different classes. And I was like, oh, okay, like, great. But I was like, God, you, did you hear that? They got signed and I did not, like, what's, what's going on? Um, mm -hmm. And, but he was telling me, he was like, just be patient, just wait, just wait. I know what you're desiring. I know what you want, just hold on. 
And I, I ended up going through that next term. So the spring term had, had came and gone and nothing yet. And I was like, okay, God, it's got to be a whole year that I've been waiting on this thing that you told me that I would get. Um, and they, they do a showcase like every, I want to say six months. And it was my time to do a showcase with my classmates. So I was like, okay, God, this is, this is it. This is, this is, this is my time to shine. This is your time to do, to do what you're doing. And, yeah. you know, I, we were working on the pieces, um, the, the scenes that we were going to do. And I was like, okay, God, like, before I prayed, I prayed and I worshiped the day before. Well, no, no, the day, the day of, the day of the performance was supposed to happen. Cause I was like, okay, God, I need you to be in this. I need them to see you when they see me, when they see me perform. Um, and the performance went great. It went well. And I was like, okay, well, hopefully I'll hear back in like a week, you know, a couple of days, maybe I hadn't heard back. I hadn't heard anything from the school or the agency in like, for like two weeks. I hurt anything and there's no way for you to know until they tell you so you don't even know if they're yeah. checking for you until they email you and they're like hey like we like mm. for you to audition do all of this stuff so i was like i i wasn't blindly waiting because i knew what god had said but i yeah. i felt i i felt like i was just in the waiting room just just waiting for the doctor to come out with the you know diagnosis or whatever um and i had i i remember because i was at work and I don't know what it was. Um, God had definitely been telling me to quit. That's another story for a different time on obedience. Um, but God had been right. telling me to quit. And I was still at the job. And I remember going to my car to eat my Chipotle because I was just sad that day. I was like, Lord, this is not a good day. I do not want to be here. And God was like, I know because I told you to quit. Um, but I got in my car and I was on my phone. I was like, okay, let me just look at my emails. And it said IAG agency read. And I was like, <laughs> I said, huh? Uh -oh. I think she got the, uh, disconnected, guys. Hopefully, it's not my Wi Fi. <laughs> All right, now it's just me. She'll be back on in a sec. Hopefully, her phone didn't die. Okay, here we go. Wow. It was just, I the devil, myself see, out. The devil busy, y'all. Wow. The uh -uh. devil busy, y'all. Let me finish this testimony. I'm saying. Um, Go ahead. Thing. So, okay, I got the email. You got the I, email, I like, yeah. I was like, hold on. I said, no, 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 I closed the app, and I looked again, and I said, wait, God, are you for real? And I just, I just started crying for, like, 10 minutes, just bawling in my car. And I called my best friend, Heaven, and she was at work and I was like screaming on the phone and she had her AirPods in, but she was like internally yeah. screaming. Um, but I was just crying because like when, when God shows up, yeah. when he shows up, it's, it's above and beyond. Yeah. Like, uh, like I knew it was coming. I knew what he had said, yeah. but seeing the promise fulfilled in like real time is like, it, it's an experience like no other. It really is. So I ended up, she was like in the email it said oh like this is the um scene that we want you to do like send it send it to us in like the next day or so and i was like okay cool i called my home girl who who's the one that usually helps me with my oh, tapes we ran it and shout I was her like, out hey. shout her out oh shout your home girl. my home girl oh she's not on here mm. is she no is she no okay no 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 she's not on here but um she had helped me she had helped me with the self tape and everything and okay, I was like, I'm just gonna send it on. It's I uh, guy, I'm it's in your hands. You gave me this gift. So, you know, I'm I'm you're gonna do what you need to do. Yeah. So I waited for like a week to hear back from them. And I was like, Okay, cool, 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 cool. I was waiting, waiting, waiting. And she was like, Okay, like we wanna set up like a Zoom interview. And I was like, Okay, this is sounded good. I got a Zoom interview. Um, and we ended up meeting the next week. 
and it, it when I tell you it went so well, like when our our personalities just matched. Yeah, so that's great. Cool. She she's living in London, but um she's originally from like Chicago or New York or something. So she's like she's American. She's very American. Um, but we just clicked, and she was just like, okay, cool, cool. I'm gonna have to like talk to the other agents at the agency, and you know we'll see what they say. And I was like, well, they better say they want me. <laughs> that's what they better right. say. Um, and she was like, okay, I'll either get back to you um, Friday, which was the next day, or next week, Monday. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Um, Friday came and went. I was like, no biggie. She said Monday. She said, yeah. if not Friday, Monday. Monday came and went. And I was like, I said, what's going on? So I emailed her and I was like, hi, I hope you're doing so well. Um, do you have an update? And she was just like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's taking so long. I'm still waiting for the other agents. And I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Just, just making sure I'm still on the table. Um, a week came and went. Wow. Another week came and went. And I was, wow. like, <laughs> I was like, God, I said, well, you can't do this. You can't bring me this close to this promise that you made for, to me and not fulfill it. You know, yeah. I'm not, you, you can't just, you can't, you, you're not, you're not going to tease me with it and then not give it to me because he's not that kind of father. Um, so I, I, I prayed so hard that night because my church was doing um, this 30 days of prayer. I'm Apostle John, um, anyone from Revelation Church who know him, um, he set up this 30 days of prayer thing for like a small group of people from our yeah. church. And that night I, I went to, um, to do the third days of prayer thing. It was a 3 a.m. prayer. And they, one of the, the person that was leading the prayer, he was like, he said to lay everything that you desire at God's altar. And I was like, oh, I know. I know exactly what I'm praying tonight. So I, when I tell you I prayed, I, I was begging God. I said, God, please, please. You told me I would get this. You have to fulfill your promise. I'm literally leaving at your feet because there's nothing I can do. Um, and that next morning I, I woke up and something told me to check my email. So I'm like opening my email. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. And I see, congratulations. I would like to offer you, <laughs> um, to get signed at the agency. And I'm sitting there like, I didn't, I didn't cry. I just, my jaw was just open. And I was like, wow. I was yeah. speechless and I'm not a speechless type of person. Like I usually got some mistakes. Um, but I was like, I was, I was like, wait, wait, really? Like, no, hold on. So I like closed the app again. I, I have to do it. I closed the app. I opened it again. I said, no, the email is real. The email is real. So I quickly, I emailed her back. I said, yes, yes, I accept. Please. <laughs> Please. And then we, he called me and we were just like chit chatting all that good stuff. Um, and then I called some friends and then I, let me tell you something. So I had already made the post. I had it in my drafts. So I knew I was going to post it because I knew it was going to happen. And I said, God, I already made the post. Yeah. I, already, right. I already had the whole caption written out. You had the, the caption? Picture. I had already written the caption I like two weeks you. ago. And I said, God, I already made, I already made the caption. I already made a post. Might as I, well. Like, you're not going to embarrass the both of us. Yeah. <laughs> I already did this. <laughs> so I, I, I made the post and everything. And I, and I knew I needed to stand on what God had told me, regardless of what time we're saying, regardless of how many weeks have passed. I said, no, God, you're not a liar. What you told me is what you told me. And I'm standing yeah. in you because you're the one who told me. You're the one who sent me here. You're the one who told me to go to the school. So your promise has to yeah. be fulfilled. Um, yeah. Whew. I'm like, is that it? I think that's it. it. <laughs> that's and it, it happened. Well, and first it happened. Of all, around the I'm, I'm signed. I'm signed. And it's crazy because I was praying in the beginning of the year. I was saying, I was like, God, you told me to be an actor. You told me to pursue this. I need an agent. Like, that was like my number one prayer in the beginning of the year. I said, I don't know how it's going to come, but I need an agent. Because I, I can't consistently work with that one. That's like the number one question when people consider yeah. you for work. They're like, do you have an agent? No. Well, right. you know, like it, it doesn't, you need one. Like you can't, you can't work without one. And for it to have been, 
you know, not only this kind of agency, um, but through the school, like the, the CEO is a Christian. He's Christian. He knows right. God. And and he's Nigerian. Oh, okay. okay. When I tell you, you my guy, he's, he's set me up real nicely. He's set me up real nicely. Um, but not only that, like it's it's a global agency. Like my agent represents me everywhere. Anywhere. I can get a job in London. I get a job in LA. I get a job in Australia. Cause cause she she has connections like that. Um, so I mean God outdid himself. He he really did. So first of all, you know, let's pray that peace. She doesn't forget us. You know oh what I'm saying? When she, when she's take, when she's taking <laughs> When she's taking jobs in London and in in in, oh, in, Jam in Germany and, and everywhere, but um, nah, like first of all, round of applause. Um, y'all give peace and love. Thank you for sharing that give with it us. To God, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Glory to God. All glory to God. And you know, one thing that really hit me while you were speaking was the times where you said, and the times were like, you literally it didn't look like what God said was going to happen was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And not only did it not look like it, God made you wait. Like you had to wait. It was no way around. No. Even I when someone to told wait. you that they'll get back to you the next day, he made you wait two weeks instead. I God was <laughs> you know? And I feel like so many of us can relate to that. I know I can relate to that just because like, isn't life isn't life there's a verse that says um we walk by faith and not by sight yeah and when i say that there is no way in life that you can continue without faith yeah. like that's something that god has told me like you can't maneuver around faith like you can't mm -hmm. try to find a shortcut around having faith no. if god tells you that he's gonna give you something or he's gonna bless you a certain way he's gonna take you somewhere yeah it's almost like an like a undisclosed like or kind of implied stipulation where it's like you better have faith yeah you know what i'm saying because if you don't have faith you shouldn't expect anything like yeah. you know what i'm saying like that god will give you anything if you don't have faith man like you need it for the sake of you continuing. You know what I'm saying? Because at any given moment, especially with all that waiting and especially with all the, like, the rejections mm -hmm. and the, like, things just simply not getting signed in college and things mm -hmm. just simply not looking like what they were supposed to look like because God said. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, they stop. You know what I'm saying? That's where they stop. They say, well, I thought this is what God wanted. Yeah. It didn't happen, so it is what it is. Or even some people will go as far to say that oh well god's not real because it didn't happen how i thought yep. it was supposed to happen mm -hmm. um but one big thing that actually kind of hit me today um i'm really new on the like maverick city music uh you know i train. love I'm not them gonna lie. i'm a big fan I, oh my gosh i love them not so gonna much. Lie. um so i'm still like discovering songs and stuff like that but mm -hmm. there's this i don't know if you know this song wait on you do right. I know you the know, song, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I played it today. Oh, yeah. That one, that one goes crazy. It does. And the reason, the reason why it really hit me um, this time was because uh, there was a moment where he said, uh, "Worship while you wait." Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and like, kind of like speaking to what I've gone through the past like year and a half, like just being unemployed for such a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt terrible. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm applying, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm, I have the portfolio, all that different stuff, and it's just nothing's landing, you know? And it's like, it was this one, the real turning point for me was, it was this uh, guy at this um, conference that I went to, African Christian Fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, well, he's the president, so he's not just some guy there. Right, right, and right. And he said, like, you know, basically if i'm summarizing what he said he was just talking about how we ought to be faithful you know like he was blind so he was saying that like of course i want to be healed but i'm not going to wait um until i can see again like you know what i'm saying in order to have a communion with god like i want to see the goodness of god while i'm blind and that hit me like a ton of bricks because and that, then i started feeling bad because like i was so low i was in self-pity you know, while I was waiting, 
for God to give me something to the point where like, you know, I, 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 I was just distraught, you feel mm -hmm. me? But it was actually in that time where it's just like, nah, remain faithful. Like, and I, and I told myself like, nah, like, you know what? Like, if this person can, can, can be excited to try and see where the glory of God is gonna come from in his current situation, then so can I, you yeah. know? And like, I'm gonna find that contentment and that peace like you had in, mm -hmm. in the situation where I'm in. Like, even though circumstances aren't gonna change, I'm gonna find it here or I'm yeah. going to get it here because it comes from God. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just feel like that's such a, a big point because so many of us are waiting right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? So many of us have got the rejection. So many of us, maybe we've received a promise from God um, well, we've all received some type of promise from God and like mm -hmm. nothing in our life looks like that promise is about to come. Yes. But then it comes. But then it comes. And when it comes, like, it's glorious. It's real. It really is. And I think even like our waiting on God, like worshiping while we wait and not being idle. You know what I mean? Like find something mm -hmm. to do. You, when you're right. waiting on God, you worship while you wait, you pray while you wait, you you fellowship and 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 find encouragement from other believers while you wait. You know, yeah. you, you don't just sit and and wait in isolation. That no, absolutely not. You find a community and you sit and you wait in while you're in that community. Um, but I mean, waiting waiting on God is probably one of the hardest things. In being in being a Christian, because yeah, we remember and and remind ourselves, you know, oh yeah, God did say this, but sometimes sometimes it takes two months, sometimes it takes two years, sometimes it takes twenty years to wait on God's promise. And it's yeah. like, how do we stay encouraged while we're waiting in that promise, while we're waiting for that promise to come to pass? Um, so I. I hope that this is encouraging anyone that is like waiting on God's promise to come into fulfillment, but it's, it's coming. God has not forgotten about you. I promise. Yes, no. He could not, he could not forget about you. It was oh, right, because I mean, you're the, you're the, you're the literal apple of his eye. Um, so just know that he, he's working while you're waiting. Yeah. That's it. He's working while you're waiting. Amen. I feel like that did it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that did it. Um, yeah. Shoot, is there anything else that you had that you wanted to say? Um, I actually had a Bible verse. Okay, give it to us. Yeah, we, we love the scriptures. You know what I mean? We love the scriptures. We can talk and talk, but we love, we love to find it rooted in the word okay. of God. I'm ready. So Isaiah 30, 18, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore, he will rise up to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. Amen. Like, Amen. like God, he, he longs to be gracious to you. He wants to bless you. He wants you to have a beautiful life. So while you're waiting for him, remember that. That his blessing, he wants, he wants to just hand it to you. So just, just wait. Go worship while you wait. Glorify him while you wait. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Do you, do you want to pray um, pray us out and yeah. also pray for anybody that could be watching this now or later? Mm -hmm. Father God, I just want to thank you for this moment of fellowship. I want to thank you um, for the ways that you've blessed me and that you've blessed Emmanuel. Um, everyone that's watching, oh God, I ask that everyone that is waiting on a promise, oh Lord, that you encourage them, that you, you tell their heart and, and you remind them of the promise that you've made to them oh god and that the promise is on its way it's 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 being crafted it's being built it's being perfected for them oh god thank you lord for being gracious and for being kind and for being loving and for being um the father that we all need and that we we know that we we desire to have oh god thank you lord for the ways that you are working through um, unassociated in the ways that you're working through me and that we will continue to give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. And I'm going to pray for you real quick. Okay. Amen. Father God, um, thank you so much for peace and thank you so much, Father God, for 
um, just using her, Lord, in this time, Father God, to share her testimony, be vulnerable, Father God, and ultimately lift up your name. And Father God, I just pray that you please, that you please be with her, Father God, as you bless her, Father God. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It can be challenges. It can be, you know, obstacles, Father God. But you that have brought her there, Lord, keep her there, Lord. Um, Father God, let your word be a lamp at her feet, Father God. Um, and I pray, Lord, that you that you order her steps, that you grant her divine favor in everywhere that she is at, Father God, in, in her professional spaces, in her social spaces, Father God. And I pray you please help her to be a light in that industry, Father God, and for that light not to dim, Lord. Um, but that light shines so bright, Father God, that all other men and women are going to be drawn to you, Father God. They're going to be drawn to your goodness, drawn to your character, drawn to your image, Lord. Um, and all be it, Father God. Um, let her just be a living sacrifice for you and encourage her to continue, Lord, to be her peace, um, her joy, um, and her love. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. 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 We'll hear more testimonies. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. We need to do more of these. Please, please. Yeah. Please. Awesome. So, uh, thank you so much, Peace. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, love you guys. And, yeah. yeah. All righty. We'll Thanks for having me. This was, of this course. Was of course. All right. Peace. All right. Bye, y'all.